They're not sending their best. They're sending people that have lots of problems. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. And some, I assume, are good people. Everyone, welcome to the show. So as you all know, Republican Congressman Matt Gates resigned last week, coincidentally, just two days before the release of the ethics report about his alleged crimes. You know, the ones including potentially sex with a minor. Um, and Donald Trump also simultaneously announced Gates was going to be his attorney general. So, of course, you know, as or as we all think, he has to have these nominations approved by the Senate. That's another topic. Um, he might be able to get around that. But, you know, the jockeying began, the bickering began. Republican senators and House members, they have been split on the decision about whether or not to release this ethics report. Well, some Republicans, including the House Majority Leader Mike Johnson, said, oh, I no, I don't think it should be released. He is even pushing back against even handing it over to the Senate. They're not even trying to disguise their hypocrisy and their amoral behavior anymore. I mean, are we to believe that if this report was about a Democrat, that Johnson or any other Republican would want to keep it secret? Really? Remember, these are the same people who were sharing Hunter Biden's dick pics in televised committee hearings. Hunter Biden, who is not a congressman, has less than zero to do with the government. And yet Johnson, you know, Mr. Oh, I'm a good Christian. He is covering for an alleged child sex trafficker, or at the very least, someone who's alleged to have had sex with a minor. So luckily, someone is leaking the details of this investigation. And as we all knew, it's really bad for Gates. So the, the woman who was a minor at the time um, of this alleged encounter, she testified before the House Ethics Committee. Uh, as you all know, she was 17 at the time of this alleged interaction with Gates. She uh, also was still in high school, and she reportedly confirmed in her testimony to the committee that, yes, I had sex with Congressman Gates when I was underage, when I was a junior in high school. So that is according to a source who spoke with ABC News. Also, there's an attorney who's now speaking out named jo Joel Lepard, I think is how you pronounce it, Lepard. Um, it's like leopard, but without the O. So he told ABC News one of his clients witnessed this girl having sex with Gates. Uh, Lepard represented apparently two women who testified before the committee. And in a statement to ABC News, he said, quote, my client testified to the House Ethics Committee that she witnessed Matt Gates having sex with a minor. As the Senate considers former Rep Gates's nomination for Attorney General, several questions demand answers. What if multiple credible witnesses provided evidence of behavior that would constitute serious criminal violations? Democracy demands transparency. Release the Gates Ethics Report. Uh, Lepard also asked, quote, what if sworn testimony detailed conduct that would disqualify anyone from serving as our nation's chief law enforcement officer? So these witnesses also apparently testify that there were other adult men at these parties where these alleged crimes occurred, and there were a bunch of illegal drugs, including cocaine. So that all came out over the weekend. Then this morning, Politico reported they also spoke with this attorney, Lepard, and he said his clients attended up to 10 sex parties, quote unquote, with Gates. And again, drugs were free flowing at all of these up to 10 parties. So here's the thing. Here's what I was thinking. Last week, I mentioned Trump supposedly has the goods on Gates because Gates's best friend at the time, Joel Greenberg, he wrote a letter to Trump 
asking for a preemptive pardon for, for himself and for Gates because he knew they were under investigation for these crimes. And we don't have to just take Joel Greenberg's word for it, right? Joel Greenberg is currently serving an 11 year sentence for these crimes and other crimes. We also got confirmation of this letter from one of Trump's allies. Remember, Roger Stone confirmed that he took this letter to Trump, that he got it from Greenberg. He used to hang out with Matt Gates and with Joel Greenberg, got it from Greenberg, gave it to Trump. Plus, Trump aide Cassidy Hutchinson also testified she was aware that Gates went to Trump and asked for a pardon. So, you know, my thought is, yeah, Gates could also have the goods on Trump, right? So, like, we know for sure that at least Trump was informed of these allegations against Gates, which it was just laughable to me. I'm listening to Morning Joe this morning, and Mika Brzezinski and Joe Scarborough announced that, oh, they went down to Florida, apparently, to kiss the ring. They apparently made their little jaunt down to Mar-a-Lago to make nice with Trump. And in the process of telling this story, which is just laughable given, you know, their, the way they acted before Trump's win, after Trump's win, and now to hear this. I mean, they, they just play all sides. It's really sickening. Anyway, um, in this discussion this morning, they mentioned that Trump was just so shocked to hear of these allegations against Matt Gates, and they acted like they bought it. It's like, where have you been? He knew. He damn well knew about these allegations against Gates. He doesn't care because he's been accused of the same thing. So it's ridiculous to say that Trump didn't know. But also, you know, I'm thinking, okay, Trump may have known about Gates and he could hold that over Gates' head, Gates' head and make him do tap dance and do whatever he wants. But as a member of Congress, Gates is privy to a lot of information and intelligence that we aren't aware of, right? So what if he is the one holding something over Trump's head? What if he has information about Trump and said, you know, appoint me to your cabinet or at least give me a position in your White House, you know, or I could spill the tea on you. We don't know, right? Anything is possible with all of these shady, disgusting people. Um, also, we have never been given the names of these other men at these quote unquote sex parties. What we have been told by Joel Greenberg in news reports through other testimony is that a lot of them were very high profile people. A lot of other Republicans, government officials, we're told. So some of these Republicans could be protecting themselves and not Gates. And are we gonna hear about it from the Democrats? No, right? Even if we get this, this report, I would venture a guess if there were other names mentioned, they're going to be redacted because even a lot of Democrats, a lot of the corporate Democrats are protective of their Republican colleagues, right? My distinguished colleagues on the other side of the aisle, my friends on the other side of the aisle, they all play the same game. They all protect each other because nobody wants secrets coming out. I mean, we've heard the stories about how a lot of people in Congress, you know, or not a lot, I should say, but members of Congress, men, kept score based on who they were sleeping with. Like if it was a lobbyist, you know, they got one point or something like that because, oh, they were easy to get into bed. But if it was like the wife of one of their colleagues, they got even more points. Gates was in on that. Gates took part in that. So these people are gross and disgusting, vile and heinous. And without seeing that report, we're never going to know who these people are. Even if we do see the report, again, it's probably going to be redacted. So, you know, when you hear that X, Y, and Z official, you know, congressman so-and-so, 
said that this report shouldn't be released, we have to question why, why? Because we all we know a lot of them hate Gates. They can't stand him. They think that he is just a scumbag. So why are they protecting him? Um, before I let you guys go, I also wanted to mention the fact that you're going to see right wing news outlets. I have seen them already pushing these false narratives that the Justice Department dropped this case because they didn't have enough evidence. That is complete and utter bullshit. That is not what the Justice Department said. Specifically, that is not what they said. It is just a fact. They were concerned that some of their witnesses, two in particular, might be seen by the jury as not being credible. Because one of them is Joel Greenberg, who, again, I mentioned, he is serving an 11-year sentence. He has lied. He has stolen from, from the government. He has, you know, he committed a ton of crimes. And he lied about all of them and, and cheated the government after being elected. So they said, you know, he's, he's a little iffy if the jury is going to put a lot of credence into what he has to say. The other witness is the 17-year-old or the woman who was 17. She's now in her 20s. Here's what they said. Because this woman did not see herself as a victim, they didn't know if the jury was going to feel sorry for her if they would see this as a crime because she had said that she did this of her own free will she did not see herself as a victim she did not see herself as being manipulated or forced into any of this she went on the the you know um what's it called sugar daddy website she signed herself up she became a sugar baby of her own free will and so, you know, she, again, just didn't see herself as being victimized. She also is now working in the porn industry. And so they were worried about how that would look in front of the jury. Again, though, we have other people in Congress, other people in the government who may have been involved in this based on witness testimony, based on reporting. So we don't know really why we know why the J justice department says they dropped this case but we don't know for sure and again i also will stand on this that i believe his daddy has some sway his father also worked in the government he is very wealthy so, you know he is supposedly still very well connected in republican circles so you factor you have to factor all of that in but, you know, people saying, even people I respect, um, Sagar and Jetty from Breaking Points, who, yes, he is a right winger, but, you know, he is very honest about things. I don't think he always knows the facts of cases because he doesn't dive into a lot of them very deeply, only the ones he really cares about. And even he made a comment today that, oh, the, well, the Justice Department dropped the case because they didn't have enough evidence. That is factually inaccurate and, and you know he really needs to stop making comments like that because it makes me question everything else that comes out of his mouth he made another comment last week about something as well that trump did that is a fact that has been proven you know litigated in court uh, you know about his child separation policy so you're going to hear stuff from the right wing and just know they're wrong they are just absolutely I don't know if they're doing it purposely. I don't think Sagar does things like that. I don't think he lies to cover up for people, but they don't know all the facts of the case. Other people, yes, they are going to flat out lie. So just know that that MAGA disinformation is out there about this case and why it was dropped, and they're wrong. They're just wrong. Based on what the Justice Department said in their own written statement. So anyway, I will let you all know when I hear more. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Please like, please share, and subscribe. Please donate if you possibly can. Love you all. Take care. Talk with you soon.